Hello and welcome to week 28 of the 2024 baking challenge. Today we are making a recipe that the kiddo picked out and I'm really excited about it and I'm using some shortcuts. I can't wait to tell you all about it. Grab your ingredients and let's bake. Cookies and cream cupcakes. It's kind of the best of both worlds in my opinion. I'm really excited about this. I can't tell you the last time I made cupcakes. Um, I make muffins once a week for the kiddo, but he picked this recipe out and he's very excited about it. So uh, this does require some sifting. Now you can use a hand sifter. There's nothing wrong with that. I am using my KitchenAid attachment. This thing is fantastic for sifting and I absolutely hate sifting. It is just like, no, no thank you, don't wanna do it. So to start off, uh, you're gonna preheat your oven to 350. Make sure you check it, nothing in there, great. Your four tablespoons of butter should have been laid out beforehand. It needs to be room temperature, or you can put it in the microwave like I did for just a few seconds. Um, I probably put mine in a little too much. Mm, yeah, not enough. I'm gonna put that in for just a little bit longer there. You can cheat a little, it's fine. Now, you're gonna need cake flour for this recipe. I could not find cake flour, so I made my own. The way you do that is you use all-purpose flour, and it's a one cup ratio. So you add a cup of all-purpose flour, you take out two tablespoons of that flour, and you replace it with two tablespoons of cornstarch, and then you mix that up. And that's your cake flour recipe, or so the internet tells me. I'm gonna cross my fingers and hope that it worked. So, in a large bowl, and I'm just gonna do this into my mixing bowl, we are going to sift the one cup of cake flour, three fourths of a teaspoon of baking powder, uh, one teaspoon of baking soda, a half a teaspoon of salt, two tablespoons of black cocoa and a fourth of a cup of black cocoa. Or actually, we're just doing the, hold on a minute, I may have messed that up. Nope, sugar's two. Um, now, I couldn't find black cocoa either, so I just added two extra tablespoons of the regular cocoa powder. Um, in addition to that, you have three fourths of a cup of granulated sugar. So you're gonna sift the dry ingredients first, and uh, I'm gonna, load up my sifter here. I promise this actually takes less time for me than doing it by hand. And I'll put the link to this below. Um, I do, I know it seems frivolous, but I use this sifter attachment quite often during the year. Um, whenever I have to make a birthday cake and I make the icing, I'm using the sifter. Let's see. There we go. I gotta open it. Now, usually what I would do, uh, because I do so much sugar at once, is I would load this up with it closed, put the lid on, and then open it. But because I just have a few things going in, it's fine. It's not that big of a deal. Okay. Should be done with that soon here. And I'm gonna kinda turn this dial a little bit making sure that nothing is staying on the paddle. And then you just have to watch it. You'll notice when it stops spitting things out, that means that it's done sifting. One thing I'm gonna go ahead and do, um, I don't know if the black cocoa is for look or taste, 
but I am going to add just a little bit of my espresso powder to these. The recipe doesn't call for it, but I've been dying to use it again, so there we go. Help it out a little. Some gentle taps. I didn't have my slide all the way out. All right, that seems to be it. Always be careful if you're using this attachment and you go to take it off because sometimes it's not it and you have more in there. I always like to look and see too, like how much stuff stayed in here. A few things, a few chunks of flour that didn't get, uh, that were too stiff to go through the sifter. All right, set that aside so I can wash it later. Now we're going to grab our paddle and our butter. Let's see, I over melted it, it it'll be fine. It's chaos kitchen day. I was not prepared for this and I should have been, but it's okay. It's been a while since we've had a chaos kitchen episode here. So close that. Always, when you take an attachment off and you're gonna use the mixer, always tighten down your, your uh, clamp there because otherwise it ends up going into your bowl. Ask me how I know. All right, putting your four tablespoons of butter in, and you're gonna mix this up for about a minute. Now, I made a mistake here. After the butter, you're gonna mix this low for one minute. And then with the mixer running, you're gonna add your two and a half tablespoons of vegetable oil. I added my vanilla to the vegetable oil. So I don't know how that's gonna work. You're supposed to take your teaspoon of, it is just a teaspoon, right? Yeah. You're supposed to take your teaspoon of vanilla and add it to your cup and two tablespoons of water and mix that up and then that, add that in. So I did not do that. Um, oops. <laughs> All right, well, we're just gonna go for it here. Um, there we go. You're supposed to add the oil while the mixer is on. And then it's going to look sandy. Mine is already starting to look sandy. And then you're going to slowly, oh, we're gonna add it all at once. All right then. Okay, mix at low speed for one minute, stop and scrape the sides and bottom of the bowl. That is very wise. Make sure you get your paddle too because I have a lot of flour and dry ingredients stuck to my paddle. So if you need to lower your mixer or lift it, oh no. Oh, I <laughs> twisted it the wrong way. See what I mean? We are, we're chaos baking today, man. It's it is the kind of day that I am having, which is fine. It's fine. Everything is fine. That's what I keep saying. Boy, this paddle just does not want to stay on here very well. That's a little frightening. Okay. That was a little too, too high there. So you're going to mix it for a minute, you're going to scrape the sides, 
Then you're gonna mix it for another 30 seconds. And then you're gonna add your egg one at a time at a medium high speed. Well, let's go ahead and do that. And of course I put my eggs in one bowl, so I'm scooping one out and uh, <laughs> fighting with the other one. And then I'm gonna turn this up because it does say medium high. I've got mine at about a four. And then adding my other egg. This batter is going to be really thin. It is a very thin batter. All right, after your second egg is incorporated, you go in and you scrape the bottoms and the sides. Um, good thing too, I've got a lot of dry ingredients here that I missed before. So, all right. And then 30 seconds more. That does it. Okay, this recipe makes 12 cupcakes. So you should have your cupcake pans already greased or you can put paper liners in, which is what I've done. Now the recipe does say if you're using paper liners or like a silicone liner, you still need to grease the papers or the silicone. Uh, I'm gonna skip that part because I really hate cooking spray. So um, you're gonna fill these up two thirds of the way full or about 50 grams of batter per cupcake. I'm gonna use a scoop. This is gonna be messy because it's thin. Do your best, okay? I put my cupcake tins on a baking sheet. This batter is very thin and I may have accidentally overfilled mine a little bit. These are going to go into the oven for 18 to 22 minutes. You know the process, a cupcake is still a cake, so after that time, you're going to use a toothpick or a cake tester. You're gonna put it through the middle of the center cupcakes. You don't wanna test on the edges. You're gonna test the middle of the middle cupcakes. If it comes out clean, they're done. After that, you're gonna let them sit in the pans for just a couple minutes, and then you're gonna move them to a rack to cool. And in the meantime, we're gonna get the frosting made. To make the topping, you're gonna to need a cup and an eighth of white baking chips, and you're gonna put those in your mixing bowl. You're gonna to need to heat a half a cup of heavy cream. Now, you can do this on the stove top. I'm doing mine in the microwave. It just needs to be heated to steaming. Once you get that steaming, you're gonna pour it over, and you're gonna let it sit for two to three minutes, and you're not gonna to touch it, okay? Just pour it over your baking chips, and then walk away, two to three minutes. If it looks like a mess, that's because it is. All right, it's been three minutes. Now you're going to gently stir your baking powder or your baking chips and your heavy cream together until everything is all melted. Did not take long, it's already all melted. You don't have to worry about getting it all completely incorporated, just make sure that those baking chips are melted to that, we are going to add our eighth of a teaspoon of salt and our whole teaspoon of vanilla, which I should have had out but did not. I'm getting low on vanilla. Good thing I have a whole nother one in the pantry. Okay. Um, oh, you're supposed to wait until it's as cooled to room temperature to stir in your salt and your vanilla. Oops, that's, I am just making mistakes left and right. Reading ahead would be really, really smart. Well, I've added it. It can't be helped now, it's done. Uh, but I will walk away and let it come to room temperature and then we will come back and do 
the rest of this. I am at room temperature and I realized I did not set my timer even after I told you guys to. So that's a bummer. You are going to need a hand mixer or an electric mis mixer with a whisk attachment, all right? Okay, this is where you should be um, adding. Well, we're gonna whip this at a low speed. So I'm putting mine at about a two. And we are going to add the butter and the shortening um, a little bit at a time here. So that is three tablespoons of butter, room temperature, and three tablespoons of shortening. Say what you will about shortening, I get it. It's gross, it's icky. I understand, I totally do. I'm gonna turn mine up just a scummidge more. It's kind of like a buttercream icing. It's like what happens if you add buttercream cream to a nice ganache. All right, three tablespoons of vegetable shortening. You can buy vegetable shortening in a stick with like measuring marks on it like butter. Um, I tend to have a tub of vegetable shortening on hand for buttercream icing anyways, so that's what we're going with. Just make sure that you're pressing it down in there this is how I like to do. I like to press and then I'll scrape off the excess. This is a half of a tablespoon or a tablespoon and a half. So I'm just gonna put a little bit in here at a time. That did not go where it was supposed to. There we go. I might turn this down just a little for this so I have a little bit more, it's like jumping into a jump rope. There we go. And I'll load up my next tablespoon and a half. I don't know if there's anything that you could substitute if you're incredibly opposed to vegetable shortening. Um, I don't know. Uh, maybe double the butter, but good gravy, that's a lot of butter. We're not Paula Deen. I know, I make all the Paula Deen jokes and I shouldn't. I've actually never tried a Paula Deen recipe. Maybe they're fantastic. I don't know. I prefer to try to keep my arteries as open as possible. I say as I'm adding butter and vegetable shortening to icing. <laughs> okay. All right, I am gonna stop. I've got a little bit of butter and shortening kind of hanging out on the edges here. Um, but I'm going to get this going again and we're going to go on high, definitely a higher speed. All right. Kicking that off. You're going to want to beat this high speed and whip it until it is fluffy. You can stop to scrape down the sides of the bowl. That's totally fine. I don't know how long this is going to take, it doesn't say.
this always makes me nervous. I'm not good at whipping up cream and things like that to make my own whipped cream. I tend to go a little too hard and uh, that's never what you wanna do. Also, you should have your four sandwich cookies all crushed up. You can do this in a food processor or throw it in a bag and take out some aggression. Now we wait. Okay, that took forever and I'm still unsure if it's fluffy enough. From there, you're going to stir in two tablespoons of sifted powdered sugar. And you wanna stir this in. We're not, we're not whipping it in, we're stirring it. I think that's gonna make it thicker. It doesn't say if you have to be, oh, it, does it say? It just says stir to combine. So scrape your sides. I've got, even with some sifting, I've got a few lumps in here. Um, my frosting is loose. <laughs> like, uh, I'm not sure about this. I don't know what I overdid, but I overdid something. Now you're gonna stir your cookies in. I get the feeling that my cupcakes are going to just look messy. Stirring just to combine. I mean, it smells good. It tastes good. It smells really good. Let's see what we got going on here. It is really light. Um, it's not what I would call whipped, but it has that texture. It just visually doesn't look like it. Um, all right. I am going to put this in the fridge. It's very hot and humid in here today. Um, so I'm gonna put this in the fridge while I wait for the cupcakes. Before you ice your cupcakes, you're gonna pull those out of the oven as soon as you can touch them without burning yourself, you're gonna put them on wire racks to cool. They have to be completely cooled before you can ice your cupcakes or that frosting is just gonna go everywhere. All right, I will see you then. Your cupcakes should be cool by now and your icing should be ready to go. And when we start icing, there's a couple different ways that you could do this. You could take a knife and go at it like that. You could use a spoon to try to get that, that high point on it. My personal favorite, and in my opinion, the easiest, an icing bag. They also make uh, icing guns for this. You could do that as well. It's uh, hard plastic. You put your icing in and you squeeze the, uh, the thing. It comes with different decorator tips. I'm using an open star for this. Um, this is just the way I do it. Do it however you can. Don't get special uh, tools for this unless it's something that you think you're gonna use. You don't need to spend the money unless you're gonna be doing this frequently. All right, let's get these iced. Keep your icing bag twisted there. And then you could start in the middle or you can start on the edge. I'm gonna start on the edge. And it's, I probably should have gone with a bigger tip because of the cookies in this. Oh gosh, that's hard to squeeze today. <laughs> I have a cookie tip stuck in there. That's gonna happen. You just get yourself a toothpick and kinda wedge it in there. All right, I just took the tip off. Let's see if this works better. Yep, there we go. That looks awful. Try it again on this one. There we go. That's slightly better, although I had another big cookie. Boy, okay. <laughs> At this point, I'm just gonna put it on there and spread it with a knife, because this is getting ridiculous. Another cookie stuck in there. Okay, maybe a spoon. Uh, clearly, I did not get my cookies mushed up enough. All right, I'm just gonna take a angled spatula here and try to fix this a little bit. These do not look good at all. 
I was concerned about the amount of cookie in my frosting and I kind of wish I had not added the cookie to the frosting. I wish that I had just sprinkled it over the top. So that is, I think maybe uh, future Katie might warn you about that earlier in the video because this was a struggle. I mean, I know it adds something nice to the flavor of the cupcakes, but I'm not sure that it's worth it as far as a payoff. Yeah, this is a mess. Good enough, they're not gonna be pretty today. I know that a lot of people like to cut the cupcake in half and then put the bottom on the top so it's like a sandwich. I'm not gonna do that, but here goes nothing. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, this is really, really good. Um, the frosting on the top has that light, fluffy, whipped texture to it. It's not overly heavy. I think um, if I were to do this again, I would not put the cookie bits inside the frosting. I would sprinkle them on top. The cake part, very chocolatey, spongy and light, not overwhelmingly sweet, which is a nice contrast to the frosting. So the kiddo picked a good recipe. I like this one a lot. Well, that's it for week number 28. I hope that you were able to bake along and I hope that you liked this cupcake recipe as much as we did. We found them to be very enjoyable and I will probably be making them again. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button below. I post these videos every single Saturday morning. You should also go over to the Facebook page or the Instagram page and follow along there because on Wednesday mornings, I'm gonna give you the shopping list and the name of what we're baking. That way you can get your ingredients and be ready to go for Saturday. All right, we're gonna go eat some cupcakes and I'll see you next week.